how do you populate a database? The purpose of creating a table is to store information in it. And there are two primary methods to achieve this. Uh, the first method is manual, manual method using MySQL Workbench and by executing SQL command using the insert statement. Why the manual method is useful for testing and troubleshooting? The ideal and most effective way to populate your table is by executing the insert statement against the database. But before we dive into SQL queries, let's first explore the manual process because we'll be using it to test a lot. Remember, this is our learning stage, so we're expected to be doing a lot of troubleshooting. So how does the manual process work? The first thing is to open your workbench, connect to your database, and then we open to the schema. The schema shows us all the database that are available. We are using the school DB, uh, we navigate to the tables where all the tables are located. In the last tutorial, we were able to create students and teachers table. Right click on the table and we can click on select rows limit 1000. This allows you to view the table or you can use this button over here. This one that looks like a table. So you can click that as well and it will give you the records that's already available in the table. By default, we don't have anything there. Remember what we're trying to do, manually editing the record. So let's go inside and just enter the record of what we want to do. So let's say we want to have a new student named James and gender will be male. Then email address can be james at yahoo.com. So this on its own is as simple as straightforward. This is just like using ordinary Excel or a spreadsheet. So it's as simple as it comes. And the next thing for you to do to make this data save into the table is by clicking on the apply button on the bottom right here once you click the apply button it shows you the statement is about to execute against the database i'm going to talk about this in the next session so we'll click on apply and then we have our database executed that's how to actually add data to your database manually and you can keep going on keep adding as many records as you want okay so then how do you use the automated method or the method that is ideal which is using uh, the insert statement as you might expect populating a table using sql involves writing command known as query which we're about to write this method is more efficient and ideal for real world application so let's say now we want to automatically register a student and we have written the interface now we want to write the code to execute against our database how do we do that what is the syntax like so let's see how the syntax look like. Pretty simple, straightforward. So we start off by using the keyword insert into the table name we want to have our data going to. Then we go and specify column name that we are concerned about because it's possible that you don't want to insert to all the columns in the table. So you specify the column name and we use column one, column two, like that continuously until you've captured all the columns. And the next part is to specify the values that you want to insert into the data. So this will be data one, as the case may be, data two, and like that continuously. So this is the syntax for insert record into the database. So let's actually do this and insert, let's say somewhere into the database for the students. So we say insert into the schema is school db dot students. The next thing for us to do is to go to columns. So what columns are we concerned about? We are concerned about the ID. That's the ID of the student, the primary key that holds the information that uniquely identify the record. Then we follow by the name of the student, then email. Then finally, we have all the values that we want to capture. The value, remember we've captured one for the first record we entered. So this can be two, two stars for ID. Then the name, we can use a string, which is a vaca somewhere. So email gender can be, well, male. Then the email can then be somewhere at y.com. And we end with our semicolon. And this serves to be our query for our insert statement is good to go like so. 
Another thing I want to demonstrate or explain is that we can actually escape these IDs or this name. We can write this name in such a way that they will not clash with existing name. For example, just think about it. If a name of a column is called insert, then that becomes a problem because insert is a keyword. So when you have something like this, you need to be able to tell the database that this is not a keyword, it's actually a field. So how do you specify that it's a field or a column? Is by using the back tick. So you can actually introduce back tick to all your column name to make sure that all the data that is going there is safe treating each of the field as a column and not any other thing. So this is a very safe way to make sure that your fields are captured and are treated as such. So how do you then go ahead and execute this? Remember, we already know how to execute query. You just click on this command here, this button here, and it will go ahead and execute the command right there. So we have the command executed at the bottom. This has been affected in our database. Let's give it a try and see what happens. So let's run the query to check our database again. If we try to check the database, notice we now have Samuel and also the information there. How do you then make changes? Because data that goes into the database are not final. You should be able to make adjustments to the data that you have. Uh, once data is in your table, you might need to update or correct it. This can also be done manually using the workbench or executing it using another statement in this time that statement is called update statement well let's first look at how to do it manually and it's pretty straightforward just like running excel so you just come here and let's say we want to add their last name as part of the name so here we say james tire right and this one we say samuel michael just come here and just type what we need to do however once you've done that you also need to come and apply the changes you've done so once you click on apply, it writes the query for the updates to work. This is what we are going to show you how to do next, but let's first see how to do it manually, which I've done and next it goes ahead to execute the command and this now becomes part of the data. How do you automatically change all this value using SQL queries? The way to do that is to show you the next command and that command is called update statement. So how do you write an update statement? Let me first of all show you the syntax. So it's called update table name, then set. You are setting a column to a value. You have column one is equal to maybe data one, the data you want to set. Column two will also be data two. So there will be a comma here and you can keep having those value continuously until you are done setting all the parameters you can change. You can change more than one columns at a time. And the next thing you need to do is to now have a WHERE clause. Your WHERE clause is very important. When you are updating any data, you need to specify a primary key most of the time to say, hey, this is the data I'm adjusting. Remember when we are coming here to make adjustments, we actually went to a place to make adjustments and the system knows that you are talking about this because we went to the record. How will the query know the record you are about to update is by introducing a WHERE clause. So a WHERE clause is written like this. You have your WHERE keyword followed by a condition. So this will be condition. Condition that must take place for this update to be executed. Let's go ahead and write a code. Let's change instead of what we have here, Samuel Michael, let's say Samuel Jane. <laughs> I know I'm using weird names. Follow me, please. So let's go ahead. We say update schema so that we know where the table is that we're trying to navigate to. So we do student school db dot student. Remember what the syntax says. It says you are setting followed by the column we want to change. Right now we're just focusing on changing the name column. Like I mentioned to you, you can you know update as many columns as you want. So what's the new value that we want to set here now? We now say Samuel Jane K and we don't want to update any more columns. Let's say, let's update more columns. Let's say now say gender is equal to female. The same way we were able to use this back tick to specify that this is a field and be treated as such because it's possible that the name might clash as one of the keywords. So you can also introduce back tick here to make sure that 
if you have any keywords here it will be treated as field not as keyword we can then go ahead and implement our where clause what data do we want to change what is the primary key or what value can we use to identify the second record the value that we can use to identify the second records are well id and also the email so it means you can either search by the email make your updates by the id or make the updates by the email or by other things let's implement our id so anytime you are writing your field name you can always use your backtick just to make sure you are not introducing any keywords that can affect your query we now say where the id is equal to what to because that's the point that we are actually focused at here now that that has been done the next thing for us is to apply our query I highlight the code I want to execute and use this one to execute the code. How do I see my result? I come back here to execute and you can see that the name has been changed to Samuel Jane. This fellow is now a female and we are good to go. And that's how you can run your insert and updates. A point to note is the primary key when using the update statement. The primary key plays a crucial role in ensuring that the correct record is updated. Without specifying the primary key or another unique identifier in your work clause, you might inadvertently update multiple records leading to database inconsistency. Therefore, always ensure that your work clause is precise to avoid such issues. And I'm going to give you an example of that, but you shouldn't do this. Let's go ahead and give, give it a try. Let's say, for example, you want to change the intention is to change the first person from James Tayo to Hassan. So let's change it to Hassan. But for some reason, we forget to add the where clause. Now, this is what happens. If you run your query like this, it is going to be executed. However, what happens when you run your query without a where clause is that it updates all the records in the table. So let's get to see how that gets executed. So when we run this, you get to see the system will kind of flag an error that's one of the major reasons why i'm using workbench because workbench kind of try to avoid this from happening either you specify where clause or not so you should be careful when you are running your update and like i said that's why i like using workbench it doesn't run your update for you if you do not use your where clause in our next class we'll be looking at how to structure table the proper way thank you for staying to the end don't forget to like share Subscribe and turn on the bell notification for more videos from us. See you in the next one.